Hello everyone, welcome to this, the last critique series for a little while at least. Today we're going to be taking a look at some fantastic images from Scott Walton. He's a photographer over in the States and he's been a long time favorite of mine. So it's really a privilege to take a look at his work and discuss some of the ideas here today. I've got uh, this little one with me today, so she's going to join in on the critique. But first, just a little housekeeping. This series was supported by Hatter Editions. They're a fine art print studio here in the UK, and they've offered to supply one of the participants with a fine art print. So I'm going to reach out to Dale Sutherland Roberts, congrats, and he can uh, organize with Hatter Editions for his free print. Right, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right in. So here are the six images that Scott has sent in for this critique. And right away we can see that they work together really well as a little series. So despite the fact that there is a range of subjects here and all the way from Arizona to Florida, they do work together. And I think the reason that that is, is to do with his style and his use here of soft light, or at least the impression of soft light, especially with uh, this wonderful image here, which we'll get into a little bit later. Coming from film and darkroom printing, Scott does take artistic liberties that he might have done so in the darkroom. So there's a fair amount of dodging and burning in some of these images, but nothing that is so excessive that it's changing uh, the scene. It's just uh, rebalancing and reshifting some of the values to create that impression of soft light. So jumping into the images themselves, one of the things that I did note was Scott has a uh, high contrast style, yet he still has that soft light. And part of that is to do with the fact that he doesn't crush any of his shadows or really extend the highlights too far. He has a full total range, um, but he lets a lot of the values fall in those midtones still. So that gives a nice gradation all the way from black to white, which provides a soft yet full range of grays. He's also very particular about his edges. You'll notice as we go through uh, how clean his borders are. And that really focuses the viewer's attention in the middle of the frame. With this particular image, I do find this top section a little bit bizarre. Um, I know it's a naturally occurring thing with that break in the rock. Uh, it looks like some sort of slippage uh, due to the geological formation of this particular place. But it's a little bit confusing in a way uh, to the eye. And it's matched down here in the reflection, although it's less of a problem down in the reflection and more so at the top where it sort of just looks a bit funny. So I'm not sure if perhaps a, a two, three ratio, um, would have worked better there. Or if we go back, just simply a composition that gets rid of that top bit, but then you lose that central balance. You might've had to use a slightly wider lens in order to keep that central balance, which without, uh, this section of the rock here getting too close to the edge of the frame. So composition wise, I think it's a great subject. I think the idea here is right, but that top bit for me is just a little bit, um, a little bit awkward. Otherwise I think it's really quite a cool image. Let me jump in here quick and say, if you're liking the video, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. Sky says, thank you. The second one here was quite interesting. Uh, Scott did send in some raw files, which we can flick to now. Um, they did come with some of his edits. So if we uh, reset that, we can see it's a, a very soft scene and that's quite typical for the kind of light that Scott likes to work in, uh, at least for what I can see in these images. So he does push these files quite a bit to achieve the look that he's going for. And I think this is quite a successful edit in that it's really focusing here on this uh, break in the mud and where the, the water has sort of run off from uh, this dried mud pan. So in this way, I find 
a lot of Scott's work is really talking about time and geological processes, which is something that I connect to um, and something that I look to incorporate in a lot of my work. So I love that uh, choice here to not just photograph the mud cracks, but show uh, some of the movement of water and how these mud cracks were actually formed. But in terms of uh, the edit, I did have a play around here with creating my own version of it. And if we just pull these two up side by side and the compare, uh, the left hand side is my edit and side is Scott's edit. So I've gone a little bit more high key with the central portion. Uh, Scott's got a little bit more softness and I think I like the way that he's uh, allowed some of the soft light to spill over onto the sides or my edit restricts that a little bit more. So that would be something that I might uh, go back and tweak. So I think this is a, a good example here of how two people can edit an image completely differently. Um, I tried to not look at Scott's final image before going in and making this version myself. And yeah, I mean, there's parts of mine that I think I personally prefer and there's parts of Scott's that I prefer. So it's always great. Uh, and that's part of why I do these critique series is to get feedback from other photographers, other people, and perhaps it's going to inform you as to how you can uh, improve some of your images. Moving on to the next scene here, this is one of my uh, favorite little compositions. I'm always looking out for this sort of thing, but I haven't quite find it yet, found it yet myself. And it goes back to that quality of time and geological processes. I mean, the way that this is cracked as it sat on that uh, rock below really gives the impression that it sort of caused the crack. Taking again a look at the raw file, we can see that Scott's done some very light um, cloning work here. There's just a little branch and if we flip back, he's gotten rid of that. And I think that sort of thing really helps once again to clean up the edges and focus the viewer's attention on the subject on the middle of the frame. And that creates this sort of cohesive style that really brings all of these images together um, and sort of joins them across geological borders. One of the things that I really like about Scott's work is his clear artistic vision, his clear artistic style. I feel as though with black and white photography, um, it's quite easy to slip into always wanting to add contrast and drama. And here's a good example of an image where if we look at the flat scan, it's actually got a whole lot more contrast and deep shadows than the final resulting image. And in this case, it's really important that Scott has done that because the subject, as much as it is these mud cracks, it's also about how the mud cracks are sort of sitting on the shelf and the crazy formations of sort of the dripping water looks like that has created all of these little striated um, patterns in that shelf. So he's really aware, Scott is, of what the subject is in the photograph, what makes this particular scene um, special. And to add more contrast to this would have been doing a disservice to this subject. So yeah, to me, opening up those shadows has really brought this image to life, actually. Maybe my only critique would be that from before to after, I actually like the deeper grays that is present on uh, the mud cracks themselves. So it might be a case of going in with a whole bunch of masks and just, uh, we can actually do this in the curves adjustment now. So to me, just adding in that little bit of pop back to uh, the mud cracks themselves, I think might tie this image together, but I mean, it's literally, it's maybe a 2% or 1% improvement in my mind. Um, overall, I think the edit and the subject matter, and again, it's all about time and geological processes. I think Scott has nailed that in this image and uh, many of the others here that we're talking about today. This waterfall scene is pretty incredible, really. And that little tree detail up in the, uh, the top there in the corner and the way it's perfectly framed by those rocks. Now, looking at the raw file, you'll see that he's done some of the cloning work that have, uh, we've been talking about. He's uh, dodged this little bit down here, which I think He's dodged, if we just uh, go down, this little piece of rock here, which I think was a good move. 
um, to lessen that as a distraction. And I think I uh, didn't need the cloning, just the dodging has effectively done that. And then of course he's done quite a bit of dodging and burning, uh, to this image to get it into a place where it looks like it's soft light. So again, zooming in, if we go to the main waterfall section, you can see there was actually some direct sunlight here and Scott has effectively uh, nullified that and widened out the scope of the light over the whole scene. So this is probably maybe a little bit of an extreme adjustment in my mind. Um, I'm not sure maybe he didn't, maybe he wasn't able to wait and photograph this in a uh, softer light, but I think that would have been the better approach in my mind. Maybe the only other critique is this bottom right hand corner, which I find just a little bit, a little bit empty and compared to the level of detail in all the dripping water and moss in, in the rest of the scene, this feels a little bit empty. So my gut reaction to this would be to crop in to maybe something like that. I'm just trying to not let that rock go directly into the corner. Sometimes that can be a little bit distracting. I think we might need to go in just a little bit tighter, um, to clean up the edge there. If I go from before to after, I find that little bit of rock sticking in is maybe a bit of a distraction. And to me, this sort of, uh, composition balances the scene out a bit better. Um, this big portion of bright rock on the left is balanced by the slightly off center to the right waterfall and tree. Um, obviously I know I've been talking about Scott's proclivity to fairly centralized compositions. Um, and that's sort of maybe one of the downsides of having central compositions is when you end up with large weighty elements like this, but you want to put the waterfall in the middle, uh, sometimes it can feel a little bit off, at least to my eye. So before to after, that would be, uh, I'm sorry, it's a little bit more in there we go. Before to after, that is uh, where I might end up with that crop. One of the maybe other benefits of cropping in is that this bright spot of the reflection of the waterfall is somewhat diminished. So if I just go back to the crop, we can see in the, in the context of this composition, I don't think that reflection's important and it being a bright spot on the edge of the frame might be seen as uh, somewhat distracting. And finally, moving on to one of my favorites from this series, these uh, glowing winter trees. The before to after is quite interesting. Scott, again, brighten things up a little bit and reduce the contrast. Uh, looking at the raw scan quick, we can see a few areas like this branch on the right hand side where Scott has cloned out a few little distractions. And I think that overall with the clean frames helps to create that impression of simplicity and soft light, um, that is so prevalent across this series and across Scott's work. So Scott's work here is really a testament to create the creation of a cohesive style through the use of one of the fundamental aspects of photography, which is light. While he does use central compositions fairly often, they don't feel contrived or simplistic. Often he actually has many layers to his scenes. So that way they remain visually engaging. I love his use here of subtlety as opposed to drama. And I think that's a reflection of an inquisitive mind. Scott's interested in the world around him, all the little things that make some of these scenes like these mud cracks happen and the sort of geological processes behind them. So thanks to Scott for sending in these images. I had a great time taking a look and discussing some of the ideas here. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you have liked it, please do click the thumbs up button, leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts on these images, as well as uh, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. So uh, we're going to be returning to some on location videos from next week. So stay tuned for that. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.